Chen Yeo finished cooking dinner, and Qian Hung came out to eat. He said to her, You even bother to arrange the cucumber on the plate, truly idle. She replied, People should cherish the little amusing things in life, shouldn't they? She asked him, Boss, can we discuss the Baxi Meng case? He countered, Why are you so concerned about this case? She replied, Baxi Meng is so nice. I want to try my best to help her get more rights. He said, if you want to be a good lawyer, you can't have personal feelings towards your clients, only positions. She said, Sujun is so bad, shouldn't he be punished? He asked her, who told you that Sujun is definitely a bad person, and Baxi Meng is definitely the victim? Are you the one involved in the case? She dissatisfiedly said, Baxi Meng's genuine feelings for Sujun were deceived. Doesn't the law punish such deceitful behavior? She then added, Boss, you have your meal. I'll go look at the case files. Wu Jun sent a WeChat message to Chen Xi, asking, Are you free tomorrow? Would you like to go out for a meal? Chen Xi replied, I already made plans with Chen Yeo to go to the amusement park tomorrow. Qian Hung was practicing archery when Wu Jun approached him, saying, The Bar Association has a social event tomorrow and President Zhang specifically mentioned that he wants you to attend. Qian Hung straightforwardly replied, I'm not going. Wu Jun remarked, it's not good to decline. We might need President Zhang's help in the future. Qian Hung reluctantly agreed, fine, I'll go, but it's not setting a precedent. Wu Jun said, this social event requires each law firm to send two representatives, one male and one female, to attend. For our firm, I'm assigning Chen Yeo to go with you. Chen Yeo came home with flowers, and Qian Hung said to her, Considering you bought flowers, I forgive your attitude towards me last night. Now, let's go make dinner, I'm hungry. She replied, I bought these flowers to decorate the house, not for you. Qian Hung said to her, Tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock, you and I will represent our law firm at a social event. She asked, Why do you want me to go? He replied, this Sunday, everyone except you has to work overtime. Moreover, if you come with me, it's a way to announce to all the other firms that you are a valued lawyer for me, which will be helpful for your future career moves. Chen Xi stood outside the venue waiting for Chen Yeo. She received a text message from Chen Yeo saying, Sis, I was suddenly caught by the boss today. I was afraid you'd be alone, so I'm telling you now. Make sure you have fun. Chen Xi replied, got it. I'm already here. Focus on your work without worries. Wu Jun appeared behind Chen Xi, and she asked in surprise, Wu Jun, what are you doing here? He replied, Chen Yeo has to work overtime, so I came specially to accompany you. Chen Xi said, that's great, let's just relax and not talk about work. He promised, I guarantee we won't talk about work. At the social event venue, Qian Hung called Wu Jun and asked, how did the cultural and social gathering turn into a singles mixer? Wu Jun replied, addressing the issue of single young lawyers is currently the most important aspect of the Bar Association's spiritual civilization construction. At the start of the social event, participants engaged in three-minute one-on-one conversations. The girl across from Qian Hung asked him, Lawyer Qian, what kind of girls do you like? He replied, 90. 50, 90. She asked, what does that mean? He answered, measurements. And I only like egg-shaped faces with proportions of 34 to 21, strictly within an area of 16 by 10 centimeters. She asked, besides body and face, do you have any other requirements for girls? He said, flowing long hair, to keep it forever. The next girl asked Qian Hung, if you were in a relationship where would you choose to go on a date? He answered, the office. The girl asked, what would you do in the office? He replied, work overtime together. Qian Hung received a call from Wu Jun. Wu Jun said, old Qian, what's going on? You're even getting complaints at a social event? Setting rules like a 50 centimeter waist, never cutting hair in your life, Qian Hung, facing the phone, said, sorry, the signal's bad. I can't hear you, and hung up. At the social event, the next activity was a rowing competition. Qian Hung and Chen Yeo were in the same boat, 
with Chinyeo rowing vigorously. She said, Boss, at this rate, we might lose the competition. He replied, I've always wanted to lose a lawsuit to experience what it feels like to lose, but I never had the chance. Today, I can experience the feeling of losing. Not bad. Chinyeo's oar fell into the water, and as she leaned over to retrieve it, the boat lost balance, causing Qian Hung to fall into the water. Knowing he couldn't swim, she jumped into the water to rescue him. After they reached the shore, he said, Chen Yeo, don't delude yourself. You pushed me into the water and then jumped in to save me, hoping that your act of saving me would erase your debt. She replied, I didn't. He said to her, let's go to the hotel. She asked, why go to the hotel? He replied, to change clothes, what else did you think? Wu Jun and Chen Xi arrived at a haunted house attraction, with Wu Jun timidly following behind her. She said to him, don't be afraid, this haunted house is so much fun. Reluctantly, he followed her inside. He fearfully grabbed her and said, don't be afraid, I'll protect you. But he was startled by something and let out a scream, pulling Chen Xi as they hurriedly ran out of the haunted house. After coming out of the haunted house, Wu Jun was still shaken clutching Chen Xi's hand and unable to calm down. She said, I've heard people say that you often turn female clients into girlfriends. Is that all like this? He let go of her hand and said, no, I haven't. I've never had any relationship beyond work with any of my female clients. Chen Xi said, all right, we're all adults, I understand. Wu Jun, recalling the events of that evening, said to her, I'll take responsibility for it. She asked, responsibility? For what? He replied, that night, between us. She asked, which night? Just then, Qin Heng's phone call came in. Wu Jun answered the phone, I'm currently occupied. If it's not urgent, I'll have to hang up. Qian Hung said, it's extremely urgent. Immediately go to my villa and bring all my clothes, including my underwear. Then, go buy a set of women's clothing and bring it over as well. After finishing the call, he said to her, I have to go handle something first. She replied, go ahead, don't let it interfere with your work. Chen Yeo emerged from the bathroom and said to Qian Hung, boss, you should go. She then sat on the sofa, but upon hearing a knock at the door, she got up to answer it. As she approached the door, he emerged from the bathroom and intercepted her pushing her back into the bathroom and telling her not to make a sound. He went to open the door, and Wu Jun is carrying two bags. Upon seeing Qian Hung in a bathrobe, he asked in surprise, What's going on? Where's Chen Yeo? He walked into the room and shouted for Chen Yeo. He saked, You're bullying Chen Yeo. As for you Qian Hung said, My taste isn't that bad. Chen Yeo emerged from the bathroom and asked, What do you mean? your taste isn't that bad. He replied, it means it hasn't reached my aesthetic standards. Chen Yeo said somewhat angrily, as if you've reached my standards. Wu Jun intervened, saying, let's not argue for now. Tell me why both of you are in this situation. Qian Hung said, that idiot pushed me into the water. Chen Yeo retorted, that idiot also saved you. He replied, fine, you admit you're an idiot. Wu Jun intervened. All right, both of you idiots, stop arguing. Come on, change your clothes. As Wu Jun left, Qian Hung said to him, Don't spread what happened today. Wu Jun replied, Got it, idiot. Then he said to Chen Yeo, Be careful. Qian Hung wanted to say something to Chen Yeo, but she preempted him, saying, Don't worry, boss, I don't want anyone to know either. Qian Hung came into the office and instructed Yu Fei to go print documents, Chen Yeo to contact clients, and Bayer Yui to help him buy medicine. Tan Ying remarked to Chen Yeo, Your boss appears to have a kind of beauty in his vulnerability after falling ill. Yu Fei commented to Tan Ying, So, you like this kind of vulnerable guy, hi? Qian Hung returned home and saw Chen Yeo drinking ginger tea. He asked her, Is this stuff effective? She replied, Yes, my cold has been under control because of it. He said, then make me a cup. She responded, yesterday, I asked you, and you said you didn't want any, so I drank it all. Qin Heng's admirer knocked on the door, 
and he told Chen Yeo not to answer it. He then went into his room and closed the door behind him. Chen Yeo opened the door and greeted, Hello. Qin Hang's pursuer sent a message saying, I'm not home, please don't disturb my live-in girlfriend, Chen Yeo. She hung up the phone and said, I know you are Qin Hang's live-in girlfriend, Chen Yeo. Chen Yeo said, You've got it wrong, I am. But she was interrupted, Can I come in and have a look? Chen Yeo replied, Please come in. The girl entered and glanced around the room, saying, Qian Hung gave up living in a grand villa for you and chose to stay in this kind of neighborhood. But let me tell you, your relationship with him won't last. He will always be mine. Chen Yeo said, You have got it Batong, I am not. She interrupted, See, he's told me. She showed her the messages on her phone. After the girl left, Qian Hung came out, and she asked, Boss, why did you send that message? He replied, because I knew you would definitely answer the door. She said, I was just worried your secret admirer might get the wrong idea, so I went to open the door. He stated, let me make it clear, I only have affection for money. She asked, boss, how did she get to know you? He replied, she's the daughter of a major client. She asked, major client? How big? He said, this client has a case worth 700 billion yuan. She said, that's huge. I understand now. You rented with me to avoid this client's daughter's pursuit, right? She continued, boss, now that Dongmin knows the address here, there's no need for you to stay here anymore. Besides, it's demeaning for you to live with a junior employee like me. You should move back to your villa. Qian Hung replied, my villa is too far from the company, it's inconvenient for work. She muttered to herself. That's how rich people are, so arbitrary. Chen Yeo messaged Ting Ting on WeChat, saying, I feel the boss must have a secret. A lawyer worth over a hundred million, but he's not living in his mansion and is squeezing with me in this neighborhood. Ting Ting replied, and there's also a maid who works tirelessly. Chen Yeo responded, I must find out his secret, otherwise, I'll never be able to turn things around. Chen Yeo bought milkshakes for Bayer Yui and Yufei. Yufei said to her, so, what's on your mind? She replied, I wanted to ask if you guys have all the case files from the boss for the past three months. I want to study them. Yufei said, yes, we do, and I've highlighted the key points in my notes. Chen Yeo carefully examined the boss's case files and found one that seemed suspicious. It was a case involving only 5.35 million, a seemingly ordinary divorce case. The boss had previously mentioned that he doesn't take cases worth less than 50 million. What could be the hidden agenda behind this? She called the client and said, Hello, I'm Qian Hung lawyer's assistant. The other person angrily replied, Why are you calling me? He didn't cooperate well with the treatment and even attacked me personally. It serves him right to have insomnia. His illness is something I can't cure. Then, he hung up the phone. She recalled how the boss always instructed her to make supper after 11 o'clock, hum a tune, but he would always end up falling asleep without eating. She said, so, he was using me as a sleeping pill. The boss told her, don't make supper tonight, I need to go over some documents. She thought to herself, alright, since you're having trouble sleeping, I'll let you rest. She deliberately went to the kitchen to prepare supper while humming a tune. After finishing, she brought a bowl to the boss but found him asleep in front of his computer. Qian Hung woke up, and it was already bright outside. He came out and asked Chen Yeo, did you make supper again last night? She replied, yes, I only made it for myself. He said angrily, next time, even if I tell you not to make any, don't even make it for yourself. She responded, okay. Chen Yeo arrived at the office, and Bayer Yui said to her, Last night, the boss asked me to attend a meeting, but he didn't show up. This morning, he apologized to me. It's the first time in my four years here that I've heard him say sorry. Qian Hung walked over and asked what they were talking about. Bayer Yui said, talking about my doctor. It's been such a long time, but my leg still hasn't healed. Qian Hung turned to Chen Yeo and said, Get ready, Su Jun, and his lawyer will be here soon. She replied, Okay. 
Su Jun and his lawyer entered the conference room, and Qian Hung and Chen Yeo stood up to greet them. After exchanging greetings, everyone sat down. Su Jun's lawyer said, We hope to settle with Baxi Meng out of court. He then presented the settlement agreement. After Qian Hung finished reading the agreement, he said, Perfect. It's really perfect. But I disagree.